thank you all very much for coming. I'm going to say it again, and I want to thank our video audience for joining us. For those of you who have Facebook, you are welcome to go to our Facebook page and then um, link to the video on your Facebook page, and everyone will be envious. Unfortunately, you can't give them the cake, so they'll just have to suffer while they watch you eat it, right? So, Joe, you've got fabulous recipes in this book. I pointed out that nobody on a keto diet can really reach you. <laughs> nobody on any diet. <laughs> yes. I say that because our younger daughter and her husband have, you know, it's sort of like becoming religious <laughs> to go on one of the keto dieters and things. So um, I found it interesting to read your book and think about all the calories I could consume that would be bad for me. I, I actually gain weight when I walk past the bakery. So, you know, this is, it's kind of scary to read those recipes, yes. But, oh, they are so good, guys. They really are. What's the name of this incredible cookie I just ate? Oh, that's chips off the old block. Oh. And it is marvelous. It's a marvelous cookie. It has potato chips in it. Oh. Oh. And, and not chopped up. I think she put butterscotch. They're supposed to be peanut butter chips. I don't know if she used... Lois, did you use peanut butter or what? Yeah. Yes, okay, so Lois has got it. So we'll have to if anybody has a peanut allergy, I'm sorry. What, is my mic not don't working or hers? Joe, let me have your mic a moment. They can't hear you. Here, take mine. Okay. And then hold it up like I said. Okay, cream. like that. Yeah. Is yeah. 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 Can you hear me on this yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's not really the microphone, it's steer <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. It's <laughs> right. right. I yes. always like to say if you hold it like an ice cream this. cone, it, it actually works. I could be ruder and suggest another. But anyway, I'll do it. Uh, so there are, there are uh, what, 20 recipes? And um, I think there's at least 20, yeah. Right. I never counted them. I just keep putting them in because <laughs> I found some really good ones this time. Some of Hannah fans sent me recipes. And, of course, I have my grandma's cookbook. My two aunts, I have cookbooks from them, and I have my great grandma's cookbook. So I'm just, I'm loaded with dessert recipes. Uh, yes, and uh, I used to weigh 99 pounds before I started this series. But it's not just dessert. There's actual protein somewhere working in the book, so you can you can try all those out. Um, how much of your time is spent? writing your stories as opposed to testing recipes in your kitchen? Um, I think it's about half and half. I really do. And don't ask me about eating the recipes I test. <laughs> See, I, res I test a recipe three times. And I do that on purpose. It must work all three times. If it does not work all three times, it does not go in the book. Because I don't want anybody to have a bad experience baking. And then my son has a girlfriend named Kathy. Does anybody know Kathy, John's girlfriend? Good. Okay. <laughs> I will tell you why I chose Kathy to give the recipes a final test. It is because Kathy can't boil water. <laughs> now, these are not my words, these are my son's words, but I figure if Kathy tests one of my recipes and it turns out well, anybody can make it. <laughs> well, you've, we've talked about this before, that you have to give really, really precise directions, because I still remember your horrendous story about the can of peas, which has marked me for life. <laughs> Well, I've had, yes, directions are sometimes, I can remember, I do remember what somebody asking me, I wrote down cream, the butter, and the sugar, which is a common baking phrase, right? Okay, now this was a daughter-in-law, a new daughter-in-law, one of my sons, who called me the next day and said, how much? I said, how much what, Jill? She said, cream. Cream, the butter, and the sugar, right? Oh. <laughs> so I had to explain exactly what that meant. And it is kind of a weird phrase. But I mean, there are a lot of 
you know, as they say, plump the raisins. What do you do? Feed them carbs? <laughs> <laughs> Things like that. That that's they're they're so I have to be very careful the words I use. And I do want children and, and children do bake. You know, some of the recipes are simple enough for say a ten year old, a twelve year old to bake. And I want them to have a good experience because then they'll keep baking and it's nice to get immediate gratification when you take something out of the oven and you can actually eat it and it tastes good. Absolutely true. And I do think, you know, I remember being brought up where we could convert um, measurements, you know, so you knew that a mm -hmm. tablespoon was, what is it, three teaspoons and on and on. But I noticed the other day I was watching something and there was a happy young mom and her two little kids cooking in the kitchen and it came to that and they said, Alexis, you know, how many, how many, how many work, you know, I mean, it's there. And so I, I, have, I got to thinking that maybe some of the more difficult baking terms you could simply ask if you have. I'm not letting one in the house because I don't want it listening to me. So Rob and I are toughing it out the old fashioned way. I'm worried about that too. Yeah. Um, mine isn't Alexis, it's something else. And I can't even think Google. of any. What? Google, Google. Google. Siri. Yeah. Siri. 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 Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of worried about that. I mean, there. Are, every once in a while, I will say something that I do not want others to overhear. <laughs> like, Kathy, I don't want her to overhear what I said about her. <laughs> no, she's getting too good, though. I mean, she's, she's turned into a baker. Oh. So now I have to look for somebody who is just as culinarily challenged as Kathy was when she started. <laughs> well, let's talk about the book just for fun, now that we've talked about the food. Um, yeah, you, you know, I've talked about the fact that people expect your books to take place primarily in Lake Eden. That's, you know, that's the background. It's sort of the Cabot's Cove, whatever it is. But in this way, I thought in this one, you have a, a nice way of moving them out of town for a while. I wanted to do that. Um, Lake Eden is a character in the books. I mean, you know, because it's fun. But I did want Hannah to have a little wider experience. And so Hannah helps, goes with her mother Ooh. to California, to LA, to help a friend move. And the friend is moving to Lake Eden. So they are helping her pack. <laughs> And that gets Hannah out of town, out of Lake Eden. Until, of course, she gets called back. Guess why? <laughs> yeah. yeah, remember, Lake Eden is a murder capital of the world. <laughs> so that is why she has to go back. But while she's in LA, does she have a chance to like give us an inside look into what LA is primarily known for, i.e. making movies? Uh, yeah, uh-huh, she does, definitely. And her mother, Dolores, also gets some <laughs> experience on a soundstage, oh. which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A cosmetic commercial. Oh. Okay. Uh -oh, huh? <laughs> right, right, remember the bags under the eyes? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's really a lot of fun. And um, in the next book, we will, we will hear about Dolores seeing that commercial aired. Uh, well, when Hannah goes back to Lake Eden, Dolores stays in California, right? What? Doesn't Dolores stay behind in yes. California when Hannah goes back? Yeah, oh. for a day or two. Oh, I was yes, hoping that she day. had time to get into all kinds of trouble <laughs> in California. So. No. No. no, her husband just couldn't get along without her. No, actually, he said, Hannah, you're going with your mother to California to help friend Lynn pack up her house and move back to Lake Eden. <coughs> I think you sh need a little rest and relaxation. And so your mother and you are going. And, and he's a doctor, he can do this, <laughs> right? He give her instructions, she'll take them. And, uh, and it's, it's kind of wonderful because he says, you have to go, Hannah. You have to go. You need a vacation. You need one. And she said, well, okay, but why is mother going? He said, I need a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So, of course, something calls her back to Lady. Yes, you all know about that. It's murder. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you too much more, but it's exciting. It really is. It's, I, I like this book. I really do. I think I like, I especially like, I don't read ahead, I especially like the ending of this book. <coughs> There's a lot to do on the way. Um, and there are a number of subplots in this book that are a lot of fun to follow. So unfortunately, we can't really talk about them without spoilers. But Not did really. you find yourself, I mean, you know, enjoying complicating up the story as much as you did? Oh, yeah. I really do. Well, life is complicated, right? Yes. Yeah. So we have to complicate things in a book, too, which happens. And, and this one is a little more complicated than some of them have been. Although then there's Hannah's marriage, which was very complicated. If anybody's up to speed yeah. with the series. Yes, yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> did, you, did you marry her off just to do that? Or did you make that choice and then decide you wanted to get rid of him? Authors <laughs> <laughs> can do that. You know, it's yeah. hard. You can go, okay, we're going to do this. And then you think, hmm. Mistake. Oh, I can fix it. No, actually, I did that. <laughs> it was kind of a low blow here. Um, my editor wanted Hannah married, and he has—he was bugging me for years. I mean, I've been at this for well, there's twenty over twenties. What, what is this one? Twenty-five, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Over over twenty-five because I'm halfway through with the next one. Okay, over 25 books in this series, and and he kept saying, Hannah has to get married. You just have to, yeah, we need a wedding. I said, we had a wedding. <laughs> we had a wedding. We did. You know, I mean, we, we saw weddings. Lisa got married to her Beesman. You know, we saw the wedding in the book. No, no, Hannah has to get married. I said, why Hannah? Well, because we need children in the book. Yeah. Hannah's got nieces. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she does, Tracy and Bethany. She's got Bethany and Tracy and sh they're, they're kids and they're in the book. You know, what's wrong with that? He said, no, no, it's gotta be Hannah. Hannah has to get married. And I finally, I got sick of arguing with him, so I said, <laughs> Okay, but the groom's got to die. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? I love that. You know, that's so interesting because most of the time people argue, editors argue against marrying off your main character. And certainly if you have a woman who has a profession, she's a baker and she's out sleuthing rather than cooking a lot of the time, you don't really want to give her children because then the whole point, I mean, dogs are great, you know, they don't need constant care and cats are even better. But, um, but I mean, so the conventional wisdom is actually not marriage, not children. So I find that interesting that yeah. he- Well, that's the way I felt about it. You know, I didn't think that Hannah should be married, but uh, he really, I think I'm never going to hear about that again. <laughs> I think I'm okay. I think that was a really ingenious solution. I like that. Yeah, marry her up and then kill him. Yeah. <laughs> and right. she's got to solve the crime. Oh, oh. Yeah. We had a guy here last night who's new to writing thrillers and somebody asked him at one point about his action scenes, how great they were. He came up with one of my favorite lines ever. I just absolutely love it. He said, my books are all killer, no filler. <laughs> oh, I'm funny. using that. All killer, no filler. I thought, okay, those that are words cute. to live by. That is cute. <laughs> it is. It was yeah. It's very entertaining. So you can't really do that, but nonetheless, you know, the No, I have to I have to have a little bit of a soap opera in there too. Right. You know, life can be a soap opera soap opera. So it's pretty straightforward that you're going to have cooking and that Hannah's got an art to her life. Is the most complicated part, working out the murder? Yep. Working out the murder is the most complicated part. Can you imagine doing one where the crime was not necessarily murder, but let's say blackmail or kidnapping or some other crime? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I can yeah. imagine. Yes, I can. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I think 
I'm writing it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I bring that up because back in the golden age, people did write mysteries that were not necessarily murder mm -hmm. mysteries. There was just a couple of great Dorothy Sayers um, short stories and so forth that revolve around things that are not murder. And, and I think we've kind of come to expect that it has to be a murder, but it doesn't really, you know, it, to be a crime, it can be other things. Actually, kidnapping could be in many senses, you know, just as horrendous, maybe more, than oh, a murder. Oh, not Bethany or Tracy, though. I know. <laughs> well, you're going to keep the kids you've got, right? Because you can't have any more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't think Hannah can possibly get married. Well, who knows? Anything could happen in Lake Eden. <laughs> And person, what if somebody burns the bakery? <gasps> no, um, but I mean, you know, bakeries catch fire. Bakeries actually used to in the old days catch fire pretty regularly. The Great Fire of London. Um, so, Not so much now. <laughs> no, no, less so now. Um, how much does weather play into your stories? Do you try to think about setting them at different times of year where the weather might influence the plot? Yes, definitely. Uh, sometimes it does influence the plot. I have. Uh, several times. Well, Anna's been through a blizzard, you know. I mean, things like that. We can we can do that. Minnesota. I grew up in Minnesota. Believe me, I, I could say Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm doing it now. I've got to stop. Uh, no, I, I. Minnesota has a four seasons. Definitely four seasons. And you guys. Don't really have four seasons here, do you? No, no we actually had sort of a winter this yeah. year, which I think is my great chance to wear a sweater. <laughs> but I grew up in Chicago, so you know, I'm more than familiar with the whole seasonal thing. But I think, I think there are definitely stories and you know um, progressions of investigations and so forth where the weather can play a pretty significant role. So Minnesota's good for that. Oh, very good for that. You know, we have. We have several seasons, you know, we've got this shoveling snow season, and then we have uh, get it out of the mud season, and yeah, and, and the slap mosquito season, we have, we have a lot of them, and then of course, then we've got the leaves falling when turning color, which is beautiful. Fall is, fall is really a nice season in Minnesota, and it lasts at least two weeks. <laughs> And I say winter lasts at least five, six months. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's the mud part is hard. I always thought October was the most beautiful month mm -hmm. in Chicago. June and October were my very favorite months. Um, and then March could get really tiresome because oh, yeah. you know it was gray and there were no leaves and there could be a lot of mud. And as just as happening, you could occasionally get the surprise snowstorm, even like at Easter or beyond. So yes, we had a blizzard in April one year in Minnesota. More than one year. It was terrible. <laughs> More than one year. More than yes. one year. Yes. Yeah. Probably not going to happen here in Scottsdale, but um, but we have we actually had to prepare Saturday for the rain because this building, well, my landlord's not listening. This building is not <coughs> particularly well constructed, and so it leaks. And oh, we had, I remember, do you remember last summer there was this huge storm we were doing an event, all of a sudden water is washing across the floor because these big windows leaked and of course, you know, I panicked that people will get hurt so we're like pulling out all our tablecloths and wires, you know, going around blotting up the store. Um, so, you know, we have extreme weather too, it's just not cold extreme weather. Exactly. I think I've got to do a tornado one of these days. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lake Eden, don't I? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I, I, I'll keep that in mind. Yes, that's a good one, yeah. So is there any particular recipe besides the coconut cake? I'm assuming there's a coconut cake recipe in this book. I'm of pretty course sure there, there is. is. Right. There are a lot of recipes in this. There are some interesting also. Um, for instance, there's a lemon chicken that you make in the slow cooker. Uh, that's, and it's easy. See, that's the thing about my recipes, they're easy. Because I don't like to work too hard. I do not like a recipe that's, you know, like uh, 25 steps. And then you're all through and you taste it and you think, this is going to be great. I've been working on this all day. And it doesn't taste that good. It's not worth working on all day. So I want the recipes to be worth however time you spend making them. And most of mine, you don't spend that much time. Sometimes you put them on. 
before you leave to go to work for the day, like in a slow cooker, and come home and add a couple things to it, and then you can serve it. And I, I do like those easy recipes. So most of mine are easy. I don't think I've ever done a, well, a couple. Sometimes those swirled cookies are kind of time consuming, but um, I've only done two of those. So I think we're okay. <laughs> have you discovered the air fryer yet? No, I've never used one. I have to say the air fryer is truly fabulous. I, I kind of laughed. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think a perfect hot dog is a is a really great thing, especially like if there's a football game. The air fryer is magnificent for it. You heat it up to 400 degrees, your hot dog goes in for four minutes, and then the secret to it is you put the bun, the hot dog in the bun, and you put the hot dog in the bun in the air fryer for two minutes, and so you get a nice crunchy bun, not a doughy, yucky bun, but a really crunchy bun to go with your hot dog that can support like the weight of the mustard. And then, like, oh God, it's transformed my life. Now I eat them for lunch. You're doing it to me. I'm hungry now. I mean, really, and I don't know if any of you have run across the Japanese yams. They are not sweet potatoes. They are slightly different, and you can find them in the Asian market, but now I'm trying to remember where Rob gets them. Maybe sprouts or something? But they're, they are a, a fabulous texture, but what's great is that you can slice them up or whatever and put them in an air fryer, and they come out with the outside crunchy, and the inside is kind of soft and sweet. Oh, oh Lord, they are good. <laughs> um, and so it's like, you know, you get a new appliance, and you figure out how to use it, and suddenly, there you are with food that, you know, you had to it is. Yeah. So I'm oh, recommending gonna, it to you. I'm going to have to get one. Yeah. 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 Now she's done it. That's the hot dog thing. God. And there's no maintenance either. I mean, you know, because you don't have grease and all the rest of it, you know? It, it's just, it's the air. So you put it in the basket, you pull it out, you rinse it out, you're done. No dishes. Just rinsing? Yeah. Wow. See, I'm opening up a whole new plot line here. If you got a really big one, you could cook someone in it. Yeah. Then, you know, probably, probably don't work. But anyway, oh, you are giving me ideas. <laughs> there we are. My husband is into molecular cooking. I don't know if any of you have seen, you know, the restaurants where you get these just amazing creams and so forth. It's a $650 cookbook, so you have to be serious about it. But he's a, he's a real cook, as opposed to me. I mean, the air fryer is fun, but... but I don't know, I really like that hot dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I keep thinking about it. I'm gonna send you, I'll send you the recipe, because you will okay. truly like it. Is that the one with nitrogen? What, the molecular cooking? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, you can do all kinds of really yeah. interesting things. My husband is so serious that when we went to Lisbon, he faxed or no, he emailed, he used to fax, I head to a restaurant in Lisbon so that we could sit at the chef's table at lunch, and it was a 25 course lunch, oh. which takes like three hours, and we were right there in the kitchen with the whole brigade. When you're in a serious kitchen, they call it a brigade, and it's run just like a military. I mean, it's chef, and then you have a whole hierarchy of people. Um, and in fact, if you ever want to watch that, there's a terrific channel called MHC, which does all kinds of foreign things, and there's a two-season thing called Chef, which takes place in a Michelin star French restaurant in Paris, where you can actually see how all that works. So, um, but anyway, they were doing molecular cooking at this, in the restaurant in Lisbon, and at one point, they, they have a mold where they blew up something that looked like an orange, created a ball, and it looked like an orange, but it wasn't a ball. Mm -hmm. It was, I can't remember, sugar or something. And then you they were able to intrude stuff into it. And so mm -hmm. the person who got the dessert, it looked like you were getting a big, fat orange, but it was not a big, fat orange at all, and it did wonderful things. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, so you can really do yeah, I mean, it's, you know, for serious cooks, it's a, we're willing to spend like two days. I, I somehow <laughs> don't two. think Hannah will have time to do <laughs> No, 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 no. I mean, not for me. When I was a bride, I think I've told you this before, my mother was great. She was a wonderful, very plain cook, and she wrote out all kinds of recipes for me, and my very favorite was the meatloaf recipe, which concluded with this instruction, mix, mix with clean hands. Oh. <laughs> That's great. You can use that. Okay. <laughs> okay. I always liked it. And then when I was first married, my then husband, who died very young, um, 
gave me for for our wedding gift a two volume set of gourmet cookbook which he described he inscribed it to Barbara optimistically <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually I actually cooked out of it although it was so far over my head show I had no idea what half of this stuff was all of, but I learned to make a bomb a b-o-m-b-e which is a French dessert you know where you could take like a butt pan and you can use commercial ice cream to line it but then the bomb is this very complicated um, kind of a cream filling with various things and you pour it in and then you freeze the whole thing and it's like yeah, mine is baked right well you can i mean this was ice cream but you know you uh -huh. can make cakes that way and so forth but, yeah yeah mine right. was three uh, uh oh i wish i spoke french i don't bomba la trois chocolat the bomb of trois chocolat yeah I, thank you you're welcome. Because I, I'm a French I major. <laughs> but I, uh, I got it out of a Julia Child cookbook, and I thought, I'm going to make this. And I made it once. It's a bump with three chocolates is basically what it oh, is. Oh, everybody loved it. Oh. And I had to keep, so everybody for the birthday had to have this. So I, I finally, I quit making them. <laughs> it was a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I'll never put it in a hand book. <laughs> but go buy Julia Child's books <laughs> and you will find it, I'm sure. Or you can probably find it online. Probably yeah. can. And how many yeah. of you buy the new the new version of The Joy of Cooking, which was an absolute staple for forever? Yeah. Because they brought it out, was it, I'm trying to remember, it was like the 50th? How, how long I, ago does it go? Do you remember? I do yeah. not remember when that was. Yeah. 75. Benny, I have one from 75. Oh, there they right there. Yeah. 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 I know he's so Anyway, it's an anniversary. Um, I'll go look. There it is. Says that. But this that means you have to get back in the chair again. I know. It's going to be really embarrassing. <laughs> terrible. A new generation of the joy of cooking, 600 recipes, blah, blah. Um, oh my God. But this was a real Bible that um, I remember that we used this when I was in high school as a um, as a cookbook. I'm from Minnesota. We use Betty Crocker. <laughs> so the original, the original copyrights 1931. So they just brought this back out, and they had to go through and you know test recipes and update it and all kinds of things. But it was a really big deal. And if you like them. Uh, if you are interested, salt, fat, acid, fat, acid, and heat is an absolutely terrific four-part TV series. I can't remember. I think it's on PBS. Uh, but this is a lady who is Iranian, and um, she explores. These are the four basic whatever. Um, and so in each one, she explores the role of salt, and then the role of fat, the role of acid, and the role of heat um, for... For cooks and it's really a fabulous program to watch so i'm pretty sure it's pbs so i can recommend that too i dare not watch these things <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I, well you have a cookbook you have a very nice cookbook but i think it's disappeared for the moment um it's i think it's still out there in um um uh, what do you call the large paperback uh Trade paper trade. 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 Thank right. you. Trade I can never paper. remember that. Somehow the the when they say trade paperback, it just doesn't stick in my head. You know, paperback, mass market, I got that, you know, that's the one you can stick in your purse. You know, I can remember that and, and of course when you get a book with a hard cover, you know, you, you know that. But this trade Paperback. Why is it trade, Barbara? Do you, do you know? I don't know. We call it large. Um, yeah. <laughs> large paperback seems simpler. Um, I think in part that it's become popular for aging eyes because it can be very hard to read the little tiny print that comes in the small paperbacks. It is bigger type. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely bigger type. And it's a paperback because um, people feel more comfortable carrying it around than if it were a hardcover. So, you know, it's, it's just one of those publishing decisions. Well, it's less expensive, too. Right. You know. But I know you did one cookbook, and then didn't the Christmas cookie murder, wasn't that one devoted 
Yes. It would pair Christmas cookies, right? Which no, is basically uh, like a cookbook. No, no that was the one you're thinking of is sugar, sugar cookies. Sugar yeah. cookies, yeah. sorry. Okay. Yeah, it was half cookbook, half, yes. half yes. story. Yes. Yeah, right. Have a and a lot of people liked that, and a yes. lot of people didn't. Yes. You know, so now I just kind of mix them up. I, I have an, and the cookbook, actually the cookbook was the first all the way up to carrot cake murder. Right. You know, from book one, chocolate chip cookie murder, all the way up to carrot cake. And don't make me lose them. Because I can't do it anymore. I mean, I just can't remember what came after what anymore without reading, you know, the books. At the at the beginning of one of my books, there's, a, you know, a list. There is a list. Look. There's a list in this book. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have to look. Right. Chocolate chip yeah. cookie. Yes. People will say, well, when did blueberry yeah. come out? And I'll go, I don't know. I think it's in the first five, you know? <laughs> yeah. How many chocolate chip cookies do you think you have baked for your fans? Oh, over oh it's end? over a million now. <laughs> wow. I know it is. It's a lot. Because Joanne yeah, has always been so great about coming with food as well as her book. To well, the actually, store. Lois Brown did all this. <laughs> I, didn't do it. I didn't do it. And I was on TV making, uh, <laughs> except you don't actually bake on TV, right? But I was on TV yesterday, and um, I made chips. Well, made. Okay. I put together the ingredients for uh, chip off the old, chips off the old block. And that Lois has got it back there. Um, and those are the ones with the peanut butter chips. But if you make them, and you know that you're going to serve them to somebody that has a peanut allergy, put in butterscotch chips. Yeah. But they work. They work just fine. You know, so you can always do substitute. I'm the queen of substitutions, let me tell you. I can remember one time I made a cake with not one single ingredient that was listed. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I called it my plant cake. And actually, it was edible. <laughs> but it was like, I didn't want to go to the store. It was snowing. That was in Minnesota. You know, it was snowing, I mean, really heavily. I didn't want to go to the store. I certainly wasn't going to drive. You know, I did not want to walk through the snow to get ingredients. So I just, well, okay, let's see. Oh, I'm going to run out of flour halfway. Okay, I got pancake mix. And, you know, I, I'm substituting like that. I can't believe it worked. I should have written it down. <laughs> you should have. Well, I'm happy to know because I was going to ask you what the leavening agent is, i.e., what made it rise. But if you use the pancake mix, it yeah. probably had it in it. So, oh, yeah. cheat, cheat, cheat. All right, no baking soda <laughs> no, or baking I didn't powder have flour. <laughs> or both. Right. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, actually, cooking to a great degree is just chemistry, you know, mm -hmm. especially baking mm -hmm. more than anything else. Your altitude makes a huge difference. I know my sister. When she was alive, they had a they had a home up on it's eleven thousand feet, I think, mm -hmm. near Gunnison, Colorado. She could never make anything work but cornbread. Yeah. Cornbread apparently will rise despite all obstacles <laughs> <laughs> at any altitude. You can manage to make cornbread. So there are things like that. Yes, you uh, notice next time you buy a cake mix, look it will give you instructions for high altitude baking mix. Yeah. So that's for people that live in the house. So when you did your first Hallmark, or when they did the first Hallmark, it was called Murder She Baked, mm -hmm. and which I've always loved. Um, was chocolate chocolate chip cookies though, wasn't it? Yes. Was yeah, the, yeah, the, the first one was thing? chocolate chip. Uh -huh. Right. So everybody loves chocolate chip cookies. Except they didn't call it murder. Chocolate no? chip cookie murder was the book. They called it chocolate chip cookie mystery. Yes. Mm. Because it's Hallmark. Yeah. You're not yeah. supposed to say murder. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't even thought of that. Okay. Well, um, what's going on with Hallmark? Anything? Nothing yet, um, but we're still talking. You are? <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So. Not necessarily with Hallmark, but we are still talking. How about questions from the audience? I think we've probably exploited all that we can do. Right here. Well, since you're talking about Hallmark, were you a consultant when these movies were made? In no. Any way? No. Um, and I did not write the scripts for the movies. I did not want to. I have written other scripts, but I did not want to do that because I'd be writing my own material. And I, I, I was afraid <coughs> that I would 
put in things that weren't filmic enough. You know, it's got to be, it's got to be something they can film. And a lot of when you write, it doesn't necessarily have to be something you can film. So, I uh, I, I only stepped in once, and that was you, you guys are not going to believe this. They wanted to make Moisha a girl cat. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Why? Oh, that just horrified. I don't know why. <laughs> I have no idea. You know, but I thought, no, 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 Moisha, you know, Hannah sings to him, my pretty boy, and you know, you just can't. I, I could not <laughs> conceive of this. That's like saying, you know, Mike the detective, yes. Mike mm -hmm. Kingston, that's like saying, Oh, let's make him a female detective. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it's not that kind of a book, guys. Um, so before we take any more questions, two things. One, I want to thank Joanne for bringing those wonderful visors that those of you who bought a book um, got a copy of. And I also want to thank our video audience for joining us and say thank you.